of course, my dream was to, and it still is, to, to win the Wimbledon uh, in seniors. The most important thing is to have uh, parents which they are supporting you and of course uh, coach. So I was kind of prepared to, to win the Junior Wimbledon. It was not like a huge surprise for me. Uh, when I was a junior, uh, it was a very good time for me. Uh, I was uh, number one junior. Um, I won the uh, Wimbledon, Junior Wimbledon, so I think it was uh, the most uh, important thing in my career um, because after winning uh, this title uh, I believed in myself um, and uh, I thought that if I win Junior Wimbledon then it, it can be my work in the future, that I can be a really great tennis player and of course my dream was to, and it still is, to, to win the Wimbledon uh, in seniors. It's uh, hard to say one tip uh, to be the best junior player. Uh, I think it's all combined, so it uh, has to be everything. Uh, it uh, has to be the, the confidence, uh, great preparation. It has to be also a good mental side, so it's, it's everything. Also, um, when I was a small, a small kid, um, the big part in my life, uh, of course, uh, it was um, it was with my parents because they they uh, they teach me that time uh, how to work hard, uh, how to you know be on the court, how to how to behave and uh, how to how to do everything. So I think the the most important thing is to have uh, parents which they are supporting you and of course uh, coach. So I think uh, when you are a junior those people around you, they are very important uh, because the, the kid is, is very small, uh, junior player is still immature, uh, so um, for sure like uh, there is a lot of things around uh, which needs to be, you know, very great so the player can, can only think about tennis and to be a, a good tennis player. And from the very early um, age, um, I was I was winning all the tournaments in Poland. So for me, um, it was not a surprise to to win also tournaments uh, outside my country. Uh, so I was kind of prepared to to win the Junior Wimbledon. It was not like a huge surprise for me. Of course, it was it was great uh, success. That's uh, that's for sure. Um, but like I said, from the very beginning, I was uh, always the best at my age. Uh, I was playing uh, a lot of finals um, against uh, my sister, so we were we were both always at the top. Um, and um, my father also was. Um, was coaching us very smart that uh, we were working really hard but uh, there was also time for some like surprises for example if we uh, played like a really good practice um, then uh, he would uh, get us some surprise like a candy bar or like an ice cream it was something very easy but for for me when I was like maybe 14 years old it, it was something it was something to get uh, from my dad if I played a really good practice so it was uh, it was hard work but it was also fun um, I think it was also very important that that I uh, that I had my sister always by my side 
um, we were practicing together, uh, so it was always uh, more fun than to hit just with the coach, because uh, sometimes when the kid is like, for example, 12 years old, sometimes the practice can be boring. But uh, with my sister, uh, it was it was fun. It was also um, we were also competing for sure against each other but uh, it was always great atmosphere and uh, my dad uh, was always treating us equal so it was not that uh, one girl was better than the other one it was easier for me uh, to go from juniors to to, to the um, seniors because uh, I finished uh, as a number one uh, when I was 17 and because of that uh, I could get a white card to uh, ITF tournaments to, to seniors for example uh, 100,000 uh, or 75,000 yeah I played those few tournaments I gained some points and for sure I was also confident you know because I was uh, number one junior, so I stepped into the, you know, um, the, I stepped into the seniors with uh, as the number one ranked player. So also the older girls, uh, when they were playing against me, uh, they knew uh, that uh, I was number one. So uh, of course uh, it scared them a little bit. For every girl is the same. I know that for for. Men's can be different for sure, but for girls definitely it's, it's the same. If she's 14 years old or, or 25, I think it's the same. It's uh, it's about to to find the balance, to say for sure like uh, bad things if she if she's doing bad things or she did something wrong during the match. But it's also important to say good things, some positive, uh, so also she can feel that uh, she, she did something good, but also those bad things, uh, because then she can improve. We cannot also lie to her face that everything is great, because otherwise she, she wouldn't uh, learn from her mistakes so I think it's also very important to hear those uh, bad things to to be a better player. So the first exercise uh, my coach uh, he's gonna uh, feed a low ball so I need to be really low with my with my knees and uh, I need to focus on the uh, head racket to go under the ball uh, so I'm gonna stay here uh, I'm gonna be in this position and I'm gonna play like this, very low ball. Remember to put your racket below the ball and accelerate through the shot. To effectively respond to low balls, you have to put enough spin to lift the ball over the net. Pay attention to my legs. I need to be really low, and uh, the toe need to point uh, that direction. So it's it's very important, and it's uh, it's a close stance. Close stance makes it easier to hit the ball in front of the body. The last step should be longer to maintain good balance and achieve high quality shot. By placing your front foot with proper angle, you allow your hips to rotate through the shot. 
It gives you more control and more power. On the court, um, he, he knew me perfectly because I was his daughter, so actually he knew how to, uh, how to speak to me, how I'm going to react and all this stuff. He was more like a coach than a father, so sometimes when we were, when we were coming back uh, home, uh, it was everything about tennis. I just felt that I needed a change. Until um, 17 or 18 years old, I was practicing with my dad. He was my coach since I was small. So um, basically for um, 14 years. Uh, so that's a long time and uh, he teach me everything about tennis, all the shots, all the ground strokes. So um, actually um, sometimes it's good and sometimes it's not good because um, on the court um, he, he knew me perfectly because I was his daughter. So actually he knew how to, uh, how to speak to me, how I'm going to react and all this stuff. Um, Everything uh, what he said in the past when I was a junior or when I was a small, everything I uh, understood very good. He was uh, very clear and uh, he was speaking to me um, with very like easy language so I could understand everything. Uh, so basically, um, I, thi I think uh, until like 16 years old, uh, we didn't argue. I mean, sometimes it was like emotional or after like bed match or something like that. But uh, I did everything what he said because uh, because he was right. I knew he was right, and I was I was doing it uh, because he's a great uh, coach. But on the other hand, um, he was more like a coach than a father. So sometimes when we were when we were coming back uh, home. Uh, it was everything about tennis. It was, to be honest, I don't remember when I could go to him and uh, ask him something as a father. He was more like a coach. Uh, so sometimes, sometimes it was very hard. And I think uh, that was the main thing that uh, I finished working with him because um, at some point it was already too much. Uh, we were all the time together, we were practicing together, we were traveling together, then at home we were together. together. So we started to argue a little bit. Uh, so we decided that we're gonna split, but of course he's still very close to me and he's sometimes helping me or I could ask him about everything so so basically he's all the time somewhere there by my side but he's uh, not uh, at, uh, at the control right now. It was not tough to for me to have uh, a new coach uh, outside the family. Uh, to be honest I don't know why, but I, I just felt that I needed a change. So uh, when I had the, the first coach, which, which was not my father, uh, actually it was, it was, it was very good. Um, like I could see that, you know, he's seeing different things and uh, somehow I also felt that uh, I'm, you know, improving uh, and uh, yeah, I think I just I can I can adapt very quickly. So if I'm if I have a coach from Poland or from other countries or or if it's my dad, uh, I think it's not important for me. The most important thing is that 
I have to trust the coach. I have to see that he has the knowledge. knowledge. Uh, so this is the, the most important thing for me. I told you my version about uh, junior career and about uh, work with my dad. But now you're gonna hear it from his side because we're gonna call him. Cześć tato. To opowiedz mi coś o e, czasach juniorskich. Jak mnie pamiętasz z tych czasów, gdzie trenowaliśmy razem? Dużo byłoby opowiadać. Zawsze byłaś taka, że robiłaś nawet za dużo. E, to u ciebie było tak, że na przykład iść się trzeba było troszeczkę motywować, a u ciebie trzeba było gasić. Czyli u ciebie tak panowała taka wręcz ciśnienie na wynik. E, pracowałaś nawet za dużo I, i, i powiem ci, czasami ci to przeszkadzało, bo ta nad motywacja jest nawet czasami gorsza niż niedotrenowanie. No ale po tym oczywiście z wiekiem to ci minęło i, i, i było coraz lepiej. Najczęściej graliśmy taki blok, to był dwie godziny gry, to było półtorej godziny mm, treningu uderzeń i na końcu grałyście zawsze pół godziny na punkty, albo nawet troszkę dłużej, ale to najczęściej był set. No i ja pamiętam, to były straszne walki na halabardy i po prostu <śmiech> widać było, że chcecie tak siebie nawzajem ograć, to było no, trochę śmieszne oczywiście i to bardzo pasowało, bo to do treningu było idealne, żeby, żeby was, jakby to powiedzieć, podkręcać, nawet nie trzeba było was tam mówić, że trzeba Snikersa, bo wam kupię, czy tam coś, tylko walka była taka, żeby kogoś zdominować. No i pamiętam jeszcze Ula takie rzeczy, na przykład kiedyś cię oglądałem nad, nad morzem, grałeś taki mecz gdzieś, prawda, o coś tam, nie wiem, ale to chyba nawet nie był za, za ważny mecz, ale no byłaś impulsywna, ja tak z daleka to oglądałem, no bo nie chciałem cię denerwować. No i tam rzeczywiście z daleka wyglądało to tak, jakby to była walka na halabardy. No i wreszcie się ten mecz skończył, to ja przychodzę na kod z daleka, no i pytam się Ula, ile było, oczywiście myśląc, że jakieś tajbreki były, że jakaś trzeci set, a ty Ula mówisz 6-1, 6-1 dla mnie. No więc, no taka byłaś. Od 12, 13 roku życia grałyście już dwa razy dziennie, no bo tam była szkoła od godziny 10 rano, czyli można było włożyć pierwszy trening od 8 rano. No i tak było, drugi trening był o trzeciej, o czwartej, potem jeszcze był trzeci, najczęściej jakiś tam ogólna i tak dalej. Także no, cały dzień sportu. Pamiętasz, jedliśmy obiady w, w Wałcie. Z, z, z różnych dziwnych prawda, słoików. No i tak to było, to trwało latami, to nie trwało chwilkę, to trwało latami. No pamiętam, tak, to no, cała szkoła praktycznie tak wyglądała, że te obiady były w słoiku. To na stykach, no wszystko po pierwsze nie było czasu, zawsze był kłopot, jakieś korki, a pamiętasz, w Krakowie nie było tak jak teraz. W, Kra w Krakowie było 3-4 hale i nie dało się załatwić na przykład, na, żeby, żebyśmy grali na jednej hali. I praktycznie pamiętasz, Ula, graliśmy na pięciu halach w Krakowie, no bo oczywiście jakiś tam dzień zdołałem y, załatwić. Na, natomiast to nie było tak, że jak teraz jest hala, jest siedem kortów, na przykład na Politechnice, teraz jest siedem kortów, a plus AWE, to masz już y, y, 10 kortów w, y, w promieniu 500 metrów. No i, pan, i pamiętasz, no przecież te korki, te jazdy, ciągle gdzie indziej, inna nawierzchnia, inni ludzie, oczywiście jakieś tam awantury o ten kort, walka o kort, no nie wiem, no to były cuda. No to już wszystko wiemy w takim razie, to dziękuję Ci bardzo za ja rozmowę. Wszystko wiemy. Ja wszystko wiem. Tak, Ty wszystko wiesz, dokładnie. Ja wszystko wiem. No. Teraz już wiem. Dobra, dziękuję za rozmowę. No, pa, pa. Pa. So the second exercise for forehand, uh, I'm gonna play cross court with my coach. Uh, he's gonna play a different ball, so it's gonna be fast, slow, low, high slice. Um, and I need to make adjustments with my legs uh, and to play, to, to choose the best shot. Pay attention to the incoming ball. The sooner you can read it, the more time you have to make proper technical and tactical adjustments.
exercise is uh, about making decision. So if the ball is uh, long, then I don't have time, so I play open stance. But if the ball is shorter, then I, I have time and I can uh, play um, close stance. So uh, this is really important to make the adjustment, to, to see the ball and to, to have a good reaction. To play effectively, you need to adjust your stance. Train both stances because skilled opponent will force you to use close and open stance during the point. I did too much, that's why when I was 19 years old uh, I got my first injury. The girls, uh, they were older than me, more experienced, uh, so it, uh, it wasn't that easy. I could do more, I could be even top 20, I could feel that. It is uh, very uh, tough to, to switch from junior uh, tournaments to, uh, to the pro. Uh, I remember when I was uh, a junior and I was coming up to play the pro tournaments. I remember that all of uh, the girls, uh, they were older than me, more experienced, uh, so it, uh, it wasn't that easy as in junior, because I remember that in junior tournaments uh, sometimes uh, if the girl was very emotional um, she could uh, lose like uh, two games and then she would uh, tank the, the whole set so sometimes uh, the emotions uh, were, you know, um, taking part of the match but in, in Pro Tour uh, they were, uh, they are a lot of older uh, girls uh, with uh, good experience and suddenly uh, they also uh, they were making less mistakes uh, than in junior tournaments uh, so it was it was a, a big step to to change it with the schedule for the pro tournaments it was pretty easy because uh, there were there was a lot of um, a lot of small tournaments uh, like 10,000, 25,000, uh, so basically uh, I could play week after week. Uh, so in the beginning I remember I was playing those small tournaments to get used to it, to see the level of the tournaments. Uh, and when I got uh, some points I was going higher and higher. Uh, so definitely it is important to play those small tournaments to, to get used to it because when you're coming from juniors and you are, you are playing already big tournaments like for example WTA, it's tough because because uh, you are losing more matches for sure because the level is very tough uh, so it's, it's not possible to, to win a lot of matches so uh, sometimes it's, it, it's very tough because the junior uh, she can lose the confidence by losing, uh, by losing a lot of matches even though it's, it's a big tournament she's thinking that if she was uh, winning in juniors then it's going to be the same in pro but, but it was not so it's, it's easy I mean it's uh, very important to start with the small tournament uh, to win some more matches to get some more points and then to step into the big world when I uh, went into uh, top 100, when I was 62, uh, I was practicing a lot. Uh, I was playing a lot of tournaments, a lot of matches. I was really, I was very motivated. So 
Um, I think I did too much. That's why when I was 19 years old, uh, I got my first injury. It was the stress fracture on my lower back and uh, it stopped me for um, six months. That, that's why it was very tough for me. So if I would uh, change uh, something, then for sure uh, I would stop a little bit and not to play so many tournaments. Uh, but that time I was I was just hungry to, to win matches, to win tournaments, to play more and more. Uh, I couldn't stop and suddenly um, suddenly the body said no. So uh, I had to stop for, for half a year. That's why maybe if, if I would be more smart and maybe if I could say stop <laughs> that time for a while, uh, maybe uh, it wouldn't go that far to, to get the stress fracture. If you are outside the top 100 and you are playing uh, small tournaments like ITF, uh, it's, it's really tough, especially for girls who were at uh, like top 100, top 50. Uh, so like me, for example, I was already 29. I was playing uh, big tournaments on big stadium. And now because of the injuries, I dropped a lot. So I have to play the small tournaments, I have to play the ITFs, which is most of the time in small cities. So it's tough to get there. So the travel is always very long. Uh, the cities are pretty small, so except hotel and tennis courts, you cannot really see that much. Uh, and also it's tough because in th those tournaments um, there are not a, a lot of spectators. There are like maybe just a few people who are coming and, and uh, watching the matches. So it's tough because uh, the best thing is in tennis is to go on the big stadium, to, to play in big tournament uh, again, against big stars. So uh, the atmosphere is amazing over there, like during the Grand Slam. But you, when you are playing the small tournament, uh, it's tough because no one is watching. Uh, there is no TV, uh, so sometimes it's really tough to survive. I played a lot of Grand Slam um, already uh, in my life, in my career, uh, but I'm still hungry to, to play some more and to do better. Right now um, the best result for me is second round, uh, which is definitely uh, not enough for me. I want to do, do more, that's why even though I had a few injuries, uh, I still want to come back. Uh, I'm still fighting, uh, still practicing, and I still have, you know, that fire to to be better. Uh, my best ranking was 29. Um, that time also the injury stopped me because I had a shoulder surgery. Uh, so I know that if the injury wouldn't stop me, I could I could do more. I could be even top 20. I could feel that. Uh, so for sure uh, I didn't say the last word yet uh, and definitely I'm gonna fight uh, to have better ranking than 29. Now we're gonna work on, on my back end. This is definitely my favorite shot and uh, in the important moments I can really count on this uh, on this back end. Uh, I really like it and uh, it's definitely uh, my best shot. The first exercise uh, for back end, uh, my coach is feeding me ball, uh, short one, uh, so I have uh, time to, to prepare and um, I'm gonna I'm gonna finish the, the shot on one leg. This is very important because uh, it's about the balance, it's about the weight transfer. So it's very important to, to finish on the right leg. Proper weight transfer should go from back leg to the front one. If you put your weight on the front leg too early, 
you will lose a lot of power in your backhand. In this uh, exercise, it's important to lean forward, uh, to put the balance on the right leg. So if the, if the ball is short, then I want to help myself with the whole body, not only just, just arms, but the whole body. And then I can put uh, a lot of uh, power in the, in the shot. It's a big mistake to try to generate power using only arm and racket. Focus on your body and create linear momentum using close stance. My character is uh, very strong and I cannot have like a poker face during my whole match. In the first round uh, I played Venus Williams and I was so scared. And I can scream. I can throw my racket, but it has to be less than three seconds. This is like a first reaction. This is very often to see uh, that in the small, smaller tournaments like um, ITFs, uh, you can see that uh, the player is playing amazing, but until like when it's for all. And then when it's for all, when it's very important game, very important points, suddenly uh, she's playing much worse. So this is the, the mental game uh, to play like on the, on the same level the whole match. Uh, now I'm very experienced uh, player. Uh, I'm on the tour for um, 10 years already with a little break because of injury. But other than that, uh, I'm yeah, I'm already for a few years uh, on the tour, so uh, now for me it's much, much easier than, I, than when I was small. Uh, in the beginning uh, I was a little bit scared uh, when, I, when I saw like the big stadium and when I had to play like a big star. Uh, for example, uh, I, under, I uh, remember uh, one tournament, my first WTA tournament and uh, it was in, in Warsaw in Poland and uh, I got the white card to main draw. Uh, it was a big tournament and uh, I was 16 years old. So in the first round uh, I played Venus Williams and I was so scared uh, that I remember the moment uh, going, uh, going to the center court and I was shaking, literally I was just shaking. My whole body was like, oh my God, I'm, I'm, pfft, I'm not gonna be able to even walk on the court. 
so I was really, I, I don't even remember like those things before the match because I was, I was really scared. But when I went on the court and I played the warm up with, with her, suddenly I just, everything just, I was just very relaxed and I forgot about uh, everything. I forgot that I'm playing on the big stadium against Venus. And I had this like amazing, how you call it, like a flow. And I played like really good tennis. I lost against her 6-3, um, 6-3. I remember the score even now. Uh, but it, yeah, it showed me that um, before the match, sometimes can be like, I can be like really nervous, but when I'm stepping on the court, I'm just, you know, focusing so much uh, that I don't see any other distractions because during the match, there is lot, a lot of distractions. Like there are like people, sometimes when I play um, in, the, in the country, like for example, when my opponent is from, it's, it's always tough because the whole crowd is against me. Uh, so uh, yeah, this is, this is really tough. This is all those distractions. You just need to be away from that. I know it's, uh, it's easy to say, but uh, you can also train this and I'm doing it during, during my practice, uh, during my tennis session. Uh, I'm doing a lot of those exercises, like my coach, for example, uh, is feeding me 10 balls. Uh, and for example, every, mis every mistake, uh, it's some penalty um, and it's going higher and higher. So for example, for the first ball, if I miss, I do um, 10 squats. But if I miss the 10th one, then I do 100 squats. So it's, it's also a little bit with the pressure because of course I don't want to do the penalty. Uh, so uh, yeah, I'm very focused during the practice. And then when I'm stepping on the match, I feel confident that I, was, that I was practicing it. I deal with it. I was in that situation already. So it's easier for me. So this uh, kind of practice when my coach is putting me in a tough situation, it's helping me with my tennis and with my mental game. Um, I, also, uh, I also have in my team a mental coach and uh, he's uh, helping me a lot. Uh, for example, um, the very important time is between points during the match. Uh, we have 25 seconds. And it depends of the player what you're gonna do with those 25 seconds, because uh, it's very important. Uh, for example, uh, when I was working, and I'm still working with my uh, mental coach, uh, I was sometimes I was getting very emotional after after a mistake. Sometimes I was screaming, I was throwing my racket, and some of the my previous coaches, uh, they were saying, oh, it's bad, uh, I cannot do it. And uh, they say I have to have a poker face. But uh, my character is uh, very strong and I cannot have like a poker face during my whole match. Uh, so my mental coach told me that uh, it's, it's not a bad thing to have this first reaction. So if I made a mistake, then, then I can scream I can throw my racket, but it has to be less than three seconds. This is like a first reaction and I'm allowed to do it. But I then after I have to relax. I need to forget about the point. So this is very important because if the reaction is taking uh, too much seconds, then I don't have time to relax and it's gonna affect the next ball. So after those three seconds, um, I'm just taking a deep breath. Uh, I have a moment to relax, moment to, to forget about the mistake. Then I have 
another few seconds for stimulation to to be again uh, ready for the next point so those three steps are very important for me in those 25 seconds so it's the first reaction it's the relax and the, the stimulation and then um, I know that I'm ready for the next one and the, the mistakes from previous balls, they don't infect me. Second backhand exercise, it's very tough because I'm gonna play cross court uh, with my coach and then whoever is gonna miss the first ball, we have to do uh, kangaroo jumps. Uh, so of course it's tough because nobody wants to lose and nobody wants to do the jumps. Uh, but this is the exercise to, to be focused and to play a solid, uh, solid ball. Uh, it's, yeah, it's about to be uh, focused the whole time and, uh, and try not to make a mistake. By adding some penalty to the exercise, you start to train feeling more pressure. It's exactly the mental state you are going to face during the competition. I have tools on the court and when I'm using it, uh, I feel more relaxed, I feel more confident. It's more about to, to win the last point uh, and not to, to play a good match. I'm happy that I could uh, I could be in those two worlds, so tennis world and the fashion world. When I was a junior, um, there was there was no mental coach. It was I, especially in in Poland, there was. I never, I never heard about the mental coach when I was 15 years old. So uh, that was a time. It was like 15 years ago, when, uh, like I said, it was uh, no knowledge about the diet. It was no knowledge about the, the mental game. It was more about the tennis. I don't know how was it in different countries, but. But in Poland, it was it was more about the tennis and the, the physical um, training. So I started to work with the with the mental uh, coach when I was um, 21 years old. Uh, first, it was to uh, to improve my concentration because um, sometimes uh, I was playing a match and I had a lot of up and downs. So for example, I could focus for two games and then two games suddenly I was losing. So I was very, I was losing concentration. So first exercises was to improve my, my focus and to be in the match, to be in that specific moment. And then we were also uh, working uh, those first reactions those uh, these uh, relax and those stimulation and also some other patterns which uh, I can use during my match. Uh, we are calling it tools that I have tools on the court and when I'm using it uh, I feel more relaxed, I feel more confident and uh, I know that everything is uh, under my control. Yeah, tennis is a, is a tough sport because uh, 
yeah, every every week we can lose the match, uh, but also every week we have opportunity to win a match. So um, I think it's also you have to find a good balance because for sure if you are losing all the time first rounds, then it's it's going to be very tough. Uh, but. Uh, but for sure you have to deal with it that when you are going uh, for the tournament, of course you want to win and of course you want to play your best. But if you're going to lose the match, it's not the end of the world. And uh, the good side of tennis is that if you lose one week, then there is one more tournament next week. So it's not like in other sports that sometimes they have uh, uh, they um, they have a tournament uh, once for four months. So if they lose in the tournament, they have to wait another four months. But we have this opp opportunity uh, to rebound and to to next week uh, do better. So this is also good, and I'm I'm seeing it more from that side that we can win every every week not that we are losing every week but but more that we can win uh, it took me a long time to understand that uh, i can win a match and uh, not not playing a, a good match actually um, yeah i don't remember that specific moment but for sure it took me a few years to understand that because uh, I'm kind of person that I want to do everything uh, the best. I want to have everything under my control. Uh, so during the, the match, uh, I couldn't stand if I was doing a mistake. Uh, I wanted to play perfect. Uh, I wanted to win uh, every match 6-1, 6-1. Uh, it was, it was the, the best for me. But when it was, you know, getting tough and uh, when I did uh, more mistakes than I expected. I was getting very frustrated. Um, but now I'm, I'm older, I'm 29 years old, so now I understand that uh, it's more about to, to win the last point uh, and not to, to play a good match because uh, after a few months, after a few years, Nobody's going to remember how you played that match, but they're going to remember if you win or if you lose. Tennis is my whole life and uh, everything what I do is uh, because of tennis or for tennis. Uh, so it's, it's basically my whole life. But uh, I found a little escape from that and uh, I launched my uh, own bag company, which is called UR and uh, I'm very happy about it uh, because this, this is my own thing. Uh, I did everything uh, by myself. I mean, of course, I have a few people who are uh, helping me with, with those bags, uh, but the idea, the design is mine and uh, I'm the boss in the, in the company. Uh, and uh, like I said, this is a little escape from tennis. So if I'm not on the tournament and if I have some time at home, then uh, for example, I'm, um, I'm reading about fashion, I'm looking at uh, other bags, other companies, I'm uh, finding an inspiration for the uh, next uh, line, so for the next collection. Uh, and then there is a moment to forget about tennis. Uh, so this is also, um, sometimes it's, it's very good not to get crazy about tennis all the time. Uh, and I'm happy that I could uh, I could be in those two worlds, so tennis world and the fashion world. Uh, so um, I want to continue uh, to do the bags uh, because like I said, uh, after the tournament, for example, I'm very tired. I have uh, two days off and sometimes I don't want to think about tennis and then I'm taking care about the bags. So now I'm going to show you the exercise for forehand volley. 
Uh, my coach is gonna feed me um, short uh, high ball. Uh, so I'm gonna run from the baseline to, to reach the ball uh, as fast as, as possible. To hit this volley effectively, you should contact the ball between your hips and shoulders. If the ball is higher or lower, then that you will have less control over the shot. I use this shot uh, when I play a good point from the baseline and then um, I'm trying to uh, to be still aggressive and going to the net uh, as fast as possible and I see that my opponent is playing easy and short ball so um, I'm moving forward and very important is the jump jump during the uh, during the contact point so um, I'm landing on the left leg and the right one is in the air, so this is very important. And after, after the shot, I'm going a few steps forward to, to reach the net. After the volley, you should come to the net as quickly as possible. Remember to follow the direction of your shot to take proper position at the net. I'm preparing my body for practice, which is later on. Every tennis player hates the, the pre-season. Uh, this is really tough work. I'm still practicing six um, days uh, a week, uh, but the recovery is a um, little bit worse. When I was like 20, I was bulletproof and I could do anything and I was, you know, healthy. But uh, right now I feel more like pain here, pain there. So it's also more about to have a good warm up before practice. Physical training is very important uh, for tennis players, I think for all athletes, to be honest. Um, because uh, yeah, at some point uh, every player can play forehand or backhand. Uh, but you know, to be physically great prepare, you have to put a lot of work 
hard work, a lot of effort, you have to sacrifice a lot of things. So um, I think the players on the top level, they are definitely uh, are also uh, the best uh, the best prepared uh, at the at the physical training. The preseason is always in November and December, uh, so it's. It's around uh, seven or six weeks, depends uh, when we're going to finish the season. But uh, the season always uh, starts in Australia, which is in January. That's why November and December are without tournaments. Uh, I think this is the worst time for players and I think no one like, likes it. Uh, because those six, seven weeks are the toughest and everybody are crazy tired and this is the main base which we are playing after during the whole season. Uh, when I'm at home um, my daily plan is uh, that I uh, wake up in the morning then right after uh, right after breakfast um, I'm doing um, some um, some exercises to uh, to wake up like a stretch but dynamic stretch uh, I'm doing the roller as well so I'm, I'm preparing my body for practice which is later on uh, but also to to wake up so this is uh, always every day in the morning uh, then uh, then there is a tennis session and after the tennis session in the afternoon um, I have another uh, physical um, training um, which is um, sometimes it's gym uh, or sometimes it's uh, on the court uh, it really depends if it's if it's uh, off season if, I mean, if it's pre-season uh, and I'm, then I'm doing in the gym then I'm you know lifting some weights and really I have a really hard uh, training uh, in the gym but later like during during the season or or also right before right before the match is more on the court more movements uh, more tennis steps uh, more uh, with the ball like like throwing the three kilos ball uh, so all kind of uh, exercises and also um, sometimes it also ends with the exercises to, to prevent like uh, injury. Uh, this is quite boring, I don't like it. Uh, I would rather, you know, run, uh, but I know I have to do it. Uh, so uh, this is also part of my plan. I think uh, every tennis uh, player hates the, the pre-season. Uh, this is really tough work. Sometimes it's even free uh, training uh, during one day. So it's, it's really hard and uh, the worst um, time, it's like fourth week. This is really tough because those three weeks are very, very tough. So uh, in fourth week, uh, we are dead. Uh, we are starting without tennis court or sometimes maybe two times a week just to hit some balls. But uh, most of the time, uh, it's gym. It's really hard gym session with you know weights and you know the whole body is just sore and and it's really tough uh, and then after those two weeks we are adding more tennis and in the end of course it's all about the tennis and of course in the end it's less gym uh, and more tennis uh, my physical uh, training uh, yeah, has changed uh, a lot uh, during the junior tournaments and, and when I was 20 and now when I'm uh, 29. So uh, yeah, it's, it's completely different. Uh, when I was a junior, um, I, didn't, uh, I didn't went to the gym to, to weigh some kilos. It was, more, uh, it was more like a stabilization, more coordination and more of this, um, I call it like fun stuff. Um, later, when I was like 19, 20, uh, the training was was really hard because um, then I was I was already grown up. Uh, my um, I was recovering I was recovering very fast, 
so uh, I remember that I was I was practicing from Monday until Saturday uh, like five hours a day Sunday was off uh, but yeah but one day was uh, was enough for me so I could do that all the time I could I could uh, I could train like six weeks like like crazy uh, sometimes I even had time to to go party on Saturday uh, and I still I was still recovering and I was I was uh, ready for Monday but of course during this uh, party I never I never drink because otherwise it would be uh, it was no chance, uh, but I was just going out with friends and just I was just dancing and you know having some fun. Uh, and right now, when I'm 29, uh, it's I still I'm still practicing six um, days uh, a week, uh, but the recovery is a um, little bit worse. I can feel it. And uh, on Saturday. I'm so tired and I don't want to go anywhere in the evening so I'm just staying uh, on the couch I'm just watching Netflix and uh, basically this is my end of the week uh, so I could feel it uh, I could feel it more with the recovery because um, training uh, I think is quite the same when I was 20 and now 29 maybe it's gonna be uh, different when I'm gonna be like 35 I don't know but for now it's 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 the same, but it's it's more with the recovery because now I'm I'm older. Uh, so um, when I was like 20, I was bulletproof and <laughs> I could do anything, and I was you know healthy. But uh, right now I feel more like pain here, pain there. So it's also more about to have a good warm up before practice. Uh, and after to stretch or to have some exercises to prevent prevent injuries. In the contract, uh, we have also uh, with our insurance insurance that we cannot do some sports like we cannot ride horse, uh, we cannot uh, we cannot do snowboard, we cannot skiing. So there are few few sports that uh, we cannot do it. Uh, but I wouldn't do it anyway if because uh, it's it's not worth it i mean for me to get injury outside tennis that would be very stupid i have too much to you know to risk that's why for now i'm just staying with tennis uh, and actually it's taking me basically my whole day so i don't even have time to go somewhere else and to have another sport because i'm i'm just you know tired physically so i would rather go and rest on my couch than to do some other sport now I'm going to show you one of my favorite exercises on the balance board. It's uh, very important uh, because during the practice or match uh, I have to be really stable with my body during all shots. So uh, this board is helping me a lot and also I have to be really focused not to break my leg. When I'm at home I'm doing this exercise every day before practice for warm-up and I'm doing it every day to improve myself. Now I'm gonna show you the exercise for shoulder prevention. This is to avoid uh, injuries. Uh, for me this is very important because uh, I had uh, shoulder surgery already. Uh, so this exercise uh, it's for warm-up uh, and it's helping uh, to build the muscle.
exercise is very tough. Uh, it's for concentration, it's for reaction and for making decision. Uh, because uh, my coach uh, is staying next to, next to the marks. Here I have two marks. One is yellow, one is blue. And also the yellow has a number seven, the blue has number nine. Also the yellow is, as a country, England and blue is Spain. So if my coach is saying, for example, blue, then I have to, and he's, the coach is uh, throwing the balls, two balls. And if he's saying, for example, blue, then I have to catch the ball, which is going to the blue mark. If he's saying number seven, then the seven is to the yellow one. And the same with the country. If he's saying Spain, then I run to the blue one. And if he's saying England, then I go to the yellow one. So this exercise I'm calling wake up exercise because uh, I'm doing it uh, before the match. Uh, it helps uh, with my concentration, with my reaction and with everything which I need uh, during the match. Seven. Yellow. Seven. England. This exercise is for back and volley, short back and volley. So I'm gonna start from the middle. My coach, he's gonna feed me very short ball, just behind the net. And I need to run and play uh, back and volley, also very short. Use your left hand to help you prepare effective step volley. By doing that, you will increase the control over the shot in this really dynamic situation on the court. This ball is very usual during the match because uh, when we are playing aggressive and the op opponent is uh, in defense and we are trying to go to the net, then he's uh, playing very short ball. That's why we need to finish the action. Uh, we need to be very fast because uh, the ball is very short and we want to get the, the ball from the air. We don't want to wait that the ball will bounce so we can take the time away from the opponent. Six. 
successful stop volley is played with open racket face. As you can see, the ball is going higher over the net, but at the same time it drops really close to the net. Now, for the last uh, few months, uh, I started to be a vegetarian. So I don't eat meat, I don't eat fish, uh, and I'm feeling great. So after light meals, uh, I feel very good. I can practice more, I can play longer matches, and I feel really, I feel really great. My knowledge about food started when I was around 18 years old. Uh, you know why? Because uh, I had a back surgery when I was when I was 19, and I didn't play for uh, six months, and I was really scared that I'm gonna gain some kilos. So I started to read about food. And, uh, and started to eat healthy because until that time, until when I was like 18, I was, I was eating everything. I was young and it was, in the past, it was a time that nobody really cares about the diet. Right, right now, this is, uh, you know, the, this is a lot of, uh, now we have a, a lot of infos and also we can Google everything uh, on the internet. But in the past, it was really tough. So yeah, I was eating everything. But after the, the back surgery, I started to eat very healthy. I was eating salads. Uh, I was eating very, very healthy food. Uh, and then uh, after a few months, I came back to, to tennis after the break. And I was feeling, I was feeling really good. So uh, I continue. Uh, I continue to, to eat healthy. Uh, now for the last uh, few months, uh, I started to be a vegetarian, so I don't eat meat, I don't eat fish, uh, and I'm feeling great. I think uh, I'm in the best shape right now for, for the last few years. Uh, so I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna stick to it, and I'm not gonna eat meat, definitely, and no fish. Uh, some of the people ask me, uh, but where do I get the protein from? Uh, but this is easy answer because I'm eating a lot of tofu, a lot of uh, lentils, a lot of chickpeas. So uh, the vegetarian uh, diet is really very good for me. Uh, during the, the tournament, uh, I'm really looking for very healthy food. Uh, I'm not eating any, any junk food or any fatty meals. Uh, I'm, I'm very careful with it uh, because after light meals uh, I feel very good. I can practice more, I can play longer matches and I feel really, I feel really great. Uh, so in my diet there is, there is no time for, for junky food and to be honest I don't, I don't miss it. I, I think I ate uh, the fast food last time I think a few years ago. And I don't even remember when I when I last time uh, bought the, the like a candy bar from the from the store. I'm not I'm not uh, buying those like instant meals or those like ready candy bars. No, no, this is not in my diet, uh, and I really pay attention to it. De and definitely during the tournament, I think uh, there is no 
exact age when the kids should uh, start like uh, some kind of diet, but uh, definitely uh, if he's gonna start earlier then it's better. Um, I'm not saying about like some kind of crazy diet to I don't know to to say to the kid you don't have you cannot eat any sweet or or something like that because this is a kid so you know kids love uh, any kind of sweets so I think it's it's not healthy to just you know forbid them to, to do it and also um, the young uh, young uh, kids are still growing so you, you cannot also eliminate some some things uh, from diet you know the diet needs to be really really big and a lot of vitamins uh, because the yeah the, the, the kid is still still growing and uh, and for sure it's, it needs to be um, you have to go to the nutrition and uh, ask a, a proper person how to do it now it's time to show you some meals uh, I prepared for you uh, what I'm eating for breakfast and what I'm eating uh, before the match. This is very easy meals, uh, so you can also easily do it at home. So um, here we've got oatmeal. So this is my meal for breakfast. Uh, it's definitely my favorite meal. So uh, the oatmeal is with uh, almond milk. Uh, it's with normally it's with nuts, with honey inside and fresh fruits. Uh, so after meal like this, uh, I'm ready for for practice, uh, and I feel very good. I feel very light, so um, I can easily go for practice even after 20 minutes after eating this. And it has a lot of carbs. Uh, so I have uh, I have a power to to play uh, practice even two hours uh, without any snack. Before the match, um, I always eat uh, only carbs. So uh, basically, it's uh, either pasta or rice, uh, but without any veggies and without any protein. Uh, because I feel better um, after eating only only carbs. Uh, I also eat uh, snacks um, like before the match. It's a banana or dates, uh, some something maybe with uh, with sugar, but healthy like 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 dates. Um, sometimes it's uh, really tough to to find like a good restaurant or. Uh, sometimes I don't know the place and I don't want to risk uh, to eat some maybe not good food or old food. So, um, so my backup uh, to eat uh, a proper meal is rice with only jam. Uh, I know it sounds uh, funny. Uh, but this is very, very good uh, because I have carbs and I have sugar, which is before the match, it's really great. During the day, uh, I usually eat uh, five meals. Um, three meals are quite big, which is breakfast, lunch and dinner. And uh, the rest is a little bit smaller, but still has a lot of calories. For example, like a protein shake or, or smoothie uh, or, some, or some energy bar. Uh, this is also very important because if I practice uh, two times a day, um, around four or five hours, I burn a lot of calories. Uh, so I have to eat all the time, uh, not, to, not to lose uh, weight. Mm, delicious. This is my favorite morning smoothie. It has strawberries, mango, banana, chia seeds, kiwi and almond milk. For me, the best thing is to, to drink also juices. Um, I love all, all kinds of juices, like um, fruit juices, vegetable juices, uh, everything of course uh, fresh, fresh made. But in between uh, meals, for example, if I'm, if I'm full and I cannot eat anymore, 
but I still need to add some calories, then I'm taking this juice. Uh, so it's, it's helping me during, during the whole day. Yeah, during the match, uh, <clears throat> of course, I'm eating uh, some um, snacks because it's tough to, to play like three hours without nothing. Uh, so um, I drink electrolytes. Mm, a lot of it uh, during every break or even before the match to, to be ready for the match. And then during, uh, during the, the game uh, I eat either banana or I have the energy bars with me uh, or I have sometimes only nuts uh, or sometimes also energy gels. So those kind of uh, things help me uh, to, um, to, be, you know, to be ready for even like a three hour match and to of course uh, have power until the end. Now it's going to be exercise uh, for my slice. I really like this exercise because uh, I can train uh, my touch here and also during the match uh, I like to use it uh, to change the rhythm. You don't have to always use power to win points in tennis. By changing rhythm with slice, your opponent is forced to adapt technically and tactically to this difficult shot. The legs are very important in that, in that exercise uh, because uh, you have to be sideways to the ball uh, and then after when you hit the ball uh, you have to also go forward. So this is also very important uh, to lean forward uh, on that shot and to keep your body steady. Prepare your racket early and higher than in regular backhand. This racket position will allow you to hit the ball from high to low and apply backspin. Pay attention also to the arm uh, because before the shot uh, you have to do early preparation and sometimes also good tip is to touch the, the rack with the rackets to the uh, left shoulder 
to have a good preparation. And then when it's coming, you have time to swing. A lot of players don't train how to effectively respond to slice shot. You can use backspin against offensive players to force them to make more mistakes. This exercise is also for slice, uh, but it's a little bit different one because now I'm going to play back and cross with my coach and I have to make a good decision when to use the slice. So I don't play slice all the time, but I have to adjust, I have to choose the, the best ball to use it and to, to change the rhythm. Your decisions have to be based on your skills and the style of your opponent. If your opponent hits high top spin balls, it's better to wait for easier shot to hit slice. I like to be alone before the match, uh, so I want to stay in the room when it's uh, quiet. So I'm thinking about the match, I'm thinking what I, what I could do better or what I could do different in these situations. The most important thing uh, during the match day for me is stick to the to my routines. So from the early morning, it also depends uh, what time I have my match. But for example, if it's in the morning, if it's 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock, then I have to uh, wake up uh, at least three hours before the match. Uh, to get ready, uh, to wake up uh, and to prepare my body. Uh, so um, it's always, the match day always starts with a good breakfast, so um, good uh, proper meal. Uh, most of the time it's uh, oatmeal uh, because I need a lot of carbs before the match. Uh, then I go to the gym and uh, I have, uh, I'm doing dynamic stretching. Uh, I use roller and I'm preparing my body uh, for warm up. And then I go on the court and I have uh, 30 minutes of uh, warm up on the court. So it's basically to, to feel the ball, uh, to, to touch the ball, to prepare all the shots. And sometimes uh, if I have a strategy for opponent, sometimes I'm also warming up uh, a specific pattern. Uh, so the 30 minutes on the court is very important to be ready for the match. Then after the warm up, uh, I'm going to the locker room, getting dressed for my match. Uh, I'm preparing uh, all the drinks, uh, all food and snacks, so like banana, uh, energy gels, energy bars. So I need to 
uh, I need to be prepared. Um, I prepare my rackets. Uh, I always need to have uh, new strings in my rackets. I need to have also um, new overgrips. So everything needs to be ready and new. If I still have time, then uh, I spend the time in the locker room because um, I like to be alone before the match. Uh, so I want to stay in the room when it's uh, quiet. Uh, I don't like to talk with uh, other people before the match. So I'm just basically I'm listening to my music. Uh, I'm, I'm just getting focused for the match. Uh, so that's the, the most important thing for me. Um, then I'm again I'm going through the strategy just before the match, just to remember what I should do during the match uh, and um, to be to be ready and to, to be very focused. Just before the match, I have a short warm up. Uh, it's basically like 15 or 10 minutes. Warm-up is very intense, so I'm already a little bit tired, so my heart rate is, uh, is beating a lot just to be, you know, ready. Uh, and then I'm stepping on the court, and uh, the match it depends how long uh, it's gonna take. Sometimes it's one hour, sometimes it's three hours. Um, but right after the court, I'm going, when I finish, I'm going to the gym. Uh, I'm doing bike just to cool down. Uh, I'm getting a drink, um, a protein drink most of the times, uh, but sometimes also with carbs and just to, just to recover. Then I stretch. Then of course I need to eat something. Uh, so the proper meal after the match is also very important. Uh, then I'm taking shower, uh, coming back to the hotel, uh, and I'm doing uh, some stuff with my physio. So basically, it's like a massage or uh, just to just to do everything so my body can recover. Uh, if I lose the match, uh, of course, I'm very upset. Uh, if I play long match, then uh, I'm so tired and I don't want to go out even for dinner. Then most of the time I'm taking room service and just staying in my bed and just resting. And I don't want to, I don't want to see anybody and just I just want to be with myself in the in the room. If I play night session and I'm gonna finish. Uh, the match at uh, 10 p.m. Then sometimes I cannot fall asleep for a few hours. So sometimes then I go sleep at 3 a.m. because there are you know a lot of emotions. Uh, there are a lot of things going on in my head. So sometimes it's really tough. But for example, if I have a morning match or or even in the afternoon, but, but not late, then I still have time to, um, to think about it, to speak about the match with my coach or with my team. And then I have a clear head and I can go to sleep easily. But sometimes also uh, I have those nights uh, when, I'm, when I'm waking up during the night, uh, for example, like at 4 a.m. And I cannot, I cannot fall asleep again because I'm thinking about the match. I'm thinking what I, what I could do better or what I could do different in this situation. So uh, sometimes, sometimes it's tough, uh, but it depends of the match. Depends if I had some chances, if I had match point, or if it was important tournament. So it's really, it really depends of the, of the um, level. If I have a plan uh, and if I have a schedule for, for, for my whole day uh, and if something is going wrong, then I'm not happy about it. I don't like it. I, I like to have uh, the schedule uh, to be made hour after hour and I want to know everything. I have to, I have to have my whole day under control. So um, I like it that way. But sometimes 
there are a lot of changes, like for example weather. If uh, my match is scheduled at uh, 11 am and sometimes it's raining and it's rain delay, for example, at, uh, and I'm going on the court at 5 pm, then I need to be flexible. I need to... I learned how to, how to make adjustments and uh, how to how to not be angry for something which I cannot control. I prefer the match day during the tournament. Uh, sometimes when I'm coming earlier uh, to practice on site and when I'm coming earlier for the tournament, uh, for example, after three days, I'm already freaking out because I want to play a match. For me, for me, going on a tournament and just practice, it's a little bit boring. So uh, I want to play, I can even play a match every day. For me, it's uh, the best thing to go on the court, to compete, uh, to, to challenge myself and of course to win. Now we're going to work on my return. This is a very important shot, of course. Uh, so now I'm going to show you two exercises. And uh, of course, uh, the most important thing is the reaction. First exercise for the return uh, is going to be from the first serve. So my coach, he's going to serve to my forehand and it's going to be first serve, so I don't have much time. That's why uh, very important is the split step and then quick rotation. Returning first serve means dealing with fast balls. Remember to fully focus on control because there is no point to add additional power to the incoming ball. It is very important that after the split step, I immediately turn my body. So I'm rotating to the forehand side and I'm having a elbow very close to my body. So I turn and I swing it. To achieve consistent return, you need solid point of contact. By turning your body and shortening backswing, you have a big chance to hit the ball in front of the body.
we're going to practice return from the second serve. So um, most of the time for the second serve, I'm staying like uh, one meter inside the court because in women's tennis, the second serve is not huge. It also depends on the, of the opponent, uh, it depends if the serve is slice or kick. Uh, but most of the time I'm trying to be aggressive, that's why I'm staying uh, inside the court. Second serve is a great opportunity to attack the opponent. Move a few steps forward and take the ball on the rise to put more pressure on the serve. Every player has, has some pattern uh, for the important moments which they are using it. I have the same. At the top level, uh, like I said before, everybody can play forehand and backhand, but it's all about those small details. Tennis, it's more about the adjustments. Strategy is very important uh, during uh, matches. Uh, that's why you have a coach uh, on the tour. That's why every player is, you know, hiring the coach uh, because the coach is also um, helping with the strategy. Um, now it's much better than uh, when I was a junior because when I was a junior there was there was um, no. YouTube and no internet. It was like um, 15 years ago, so it was very tough to um, to find some you know matches um, of my opponent, uh, especially in junior, because the junior tournaments uh, there were no on TV, uh, so nobody was recording it. Maybe just the crazy parents with with cameras. Uh, but there was nothing like that, nothing like, like now, where we have, you know, uh, videos and cameras everywhere. Um, so actually, that time when I was a junior, um, I was more focusing on myself, on my game. And uh, that time when I was a junior, uh, I was practicing with my dad, he was my coach. Um, so we were sitting before the match and we were talking about it, but it was more uh, about me. But sometimes uh, we also know the girl, sometimes we, we saw uh, my opponent before, like from previous tournaments. So then it was easier, then we knew the girl uh, and we could also um, talk about the strategy. But right now uh, this is very easy because uh, everything is on the internet. Uh, so you could basically watch um, all the matches of the players. Uh, so before every match, uh, I'm sitting with my coach and we are um, discussing uh, the weak, weaker sides uh, of my opponent. Uh, at the top level, uh, like I said before, everybody can play forehand and backhand, but it's all about those small details. Uh, and also during the important points 
it's uh, also um, it's also uh, it's also the key to to read the opponent because uh, every player has has some pattern uh, for the important moments which uh, they are using it i have the same so if it's uh, if it's like a critical moment during the match uh, then um, i feel more confident if i'm using this pattern which i learn during the practice which i uh, spoke with my coach uh, and this is this is really uh, i think um, thing which every player are doing or for sure should do sometimes i have a note with me uh, and i put it uh, in the bag uh, but this is the note is more about my game it's about uh, it's about my patterns and my um, my things which i need to remember about during the match uh, but if it's about the opponent it's more in my head uh, because we already we are talking about it uh, before the match so um, then it's just a reminder um, in the morning during during that match day and then it uh, stays in my head sometimes uh, sometimes we have to change the strategy you know because sometimes uh, for example, the girl has a uh, weaker forehand, but on that day when she's playing against me, sometimes the forehand is crazy good. So then I cannot play to her forehand because on that day it's, it's, it's her better shot. That's why sometimes I need to adjust. Uh, this is very important, you know, tennis it's more about the adjustments uh, and uh, sometimes also you have to count on yourself. The whole game changes, uh, depends on the surfaces, but not the patterns. Uh, if I play important points, then it doesn't matter if it's grass or, or clay. I do the same things because I feel confidence with it. It's more uh, about the opponent. This is the thing which sometimes change, uh, but I don't change it for surface. For example, if I play girl um, who is um, like a you know good uh, strong hitter, and then I'm changing. I'm trying to change the rhythm. So I play either slice or uh, I play higher board just to get out of uh, of her rhythm uh, and to get out to get out her of her comfort zone. And for example, if I play girl who has um, weaker forehand then uh, the first ball for example the return i play to her forehand uh, because it's important to open the point with her weaker side or if it's important moment then also i play to her weaker side because i know in my head that there she is not uh, feeling confident when you are a junior you are like pretty small and you don't have that much power so it was more about not to make a mistake so I remember in junior tennis that I was I was running a lot and not doing mistakes. Uh, so that's why I was better than other players. I know that now it's different because when I was a junior, it was 15 years ago, and everything is going up. You know, the the level is going up, and uh, even the young girls are playing right now very strong. But when I was a junior, it was uh, more about. Um, more about being consistent. It depends of the of the junior of the player um, how much strategy we can put into her head because uh, sometimes if the girl is still immature then it's going to be too much for her. Uh, so I think uh, basically the most important thing is to think about uh, about like um, herself, like about her style. Uh, I don't think it's, I mean, sometimes, of course, it's important about the, the strategy, but I think it's more to keep the emotions, um, more to um, focus um, on her game than on the opponent. Now we have an uh, important uh, moment because uh, my opponent is serving, it's deuce, I want to surprise her, so uh, I play return uh, slice 
either forehand or backhand, it doesn't matter, but it has to be slice. Uh, and the first ball after the slice, uh, I try to play to, uh, to her weaker side. Uh, it's, it's important to have the, the game plan uh, in my head because when it's coming to this, uh, to this uh, critical moment in the match, uh, I know my plan, I stick to it and it's, give me, uh, it's giving me more confidence. It's quite easy to return fast serve using backspin. By doing this, you take the pace of the serve, so you force rival to generate more power with the next shot. Now I have a break point, so very important uh, moment. Uh, points on the adventure side, uh, they are more important than on the deuce side. Uh, that's why uh, you have to be really focused on that specific side. Uh, my game plan for the break point uh, is uh, to play the return to my opponent weaker side. Uh, and the same with the first ball. So first two balls, I'm trying to uh, aim to my opponent's weaker side. During the match, you have to think tactically. By playing balls to the opponent's weaker side, you put more pressure on rival, so you can expect him to make more errors.
it's five all deuce important moment I'm serving and my plan is to use the angles of the court so I'm trying to hit the serve uh, I'm trying to aim to to the forehand so very wide serve and then I'm playing the second ball to the other corner so I want to move my opponent as much as possible You don't always have to serve to the weaker side. By using wide serve to the stronger side of your rival, you open the weaker side for your next shot. We are born to, to make some exercises every day, to, to run, to, to play. I remember that my sister, Aga, she was helping me to put the socks on because I, I couldn't bend. You are either away from home or you are very tired after practice. So sometimes all you want to do is spend the evening on the couch. Some of the people are saying that the professional tennis players are feeling pain every day. Uh, but I think it's, it's too much. Yes, we are feeling the pain most of the times, but it's not like every day. Uh, but yes, when, when someone is working hard, practicing hard, then very often we have uh, small injuries, small pains. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's part of, the, of, of our job. Uh, of course, there, there is also um, a lot of injuries uh, because in tennis uh, there is a lot of rotations which is uh, very tough for the back. Uh, I'm the best example for it because I had the, uh, I had the lower back surgery um, when I was uh, 19 years old. Uh, it was uh, it was a very serious injury for me. I had the stress fracture on my lower back, uh, and the fracture. Uh, the doctor uh, told me that the bone it's not healing, uh, so he said I would need to wait uh, even half year or even one year, or maybe I wouldn't even come back to tennis if the bone. Uh, won't heal um, so it was very tough time for me I was young I was I was changing from juniors to to pro I was just I was just getting there uh, so it was it was uh, very tough and uh, somehow I um, I got a contact to to one um, to one doctor in the United States uh, and he said uh, he could do the surgery on my back, uh, which was very tough, uh, but he said uh, he can help me. So I went there, I did the surgery, and uh, then I had to wear braces on my, on my back, on my lower back for three months. 
and after I couldn't bend, I couldn't twist. So I think it was the, the worst time in my life. Um, I, I remember that my sister, Aga, she was helping me to put the socks on because I, I couldn't bend. Uh, but I believe so much that, that, that this uh, surgery it was a good idea. Uh, that after four months I was already on the court, uh, practicing very light, but I was there and uh, I was feeling okay. I still had some pain, which, which, was, uh, which was of course normal after the surgery, but I was, I was feeling really good. So after six months, I came back on the tour uh, and I could play I could play again. I was so happy. I was so happy about it. And I remember that uh, my second tournament after, the, after coming back, my second tournament was US Open. I had, the, uh, I had this special ranking. Uh, so I was already in main draw uh, with, the, with that special ranking. And I won the first round. I remember I won the first round against uh, Anna Chakvetadze, a great player from Russia. And I was so happy about it. Like I didn't believe that after not playing uh, half year, uh, after having a surgery on my back, which was very, very risky and tough, I managed to come back and I won the first round in the US Open. So it was a huge step for me that even after this kind of surgery, I, still, I was still able to fight, uh, to practice and to come back at the, at the great level. Those injuries which I had made me a better player, like better fighter, because I know that I had, I, I had very tough moments uh, in my career, in my life, uh, and I went through them. So right now I'm enjoying more tennis because right now when I'm healthy, when I don't have any injuries, I'm just enjoying it. Uh, so um, I think that's the worst part of, uh, of uh, um, being an athlete and having injury because uh, we are born to, to make some exercises every day, to, to run, to, to play, practice. And when we have an injury, it's something that uh, we cannot control. It's, um, then we cannot do what we love. So the, this is very, very tough time. I've been through this. I had also a monoclosis virus. Uh, this is um, this is this was also very tough for me because when I had the injury, um, I could. The doctor told me, "Okay, you have three months off, and then you are coming back." But with the monoclosis virus, I didn't know when I'm going to be able to to compete again. So this is the virus which um, which uh, there is no cure for that. So you just have to lie at home, just rest, completely rest. You cannot do any physical exercises, uh, which it was terrible for me because uh, I'm that kind of person that I cannot just stay at home and do nothing. Uh, so I was just, I was getting crazy. I didn't even watch tennis on TV because I was, it was just, it was for me very frustrated that girls were playing uh, they were on the tour, they were competing, traveling around the world and, you know, doing what they love and I was staying at home. Uh, so it was also uh, one of the toughest moments in my life. Uh, life on the tour uh, is very lonely. Uh, I was lucky that I had my sister uh, most of the time, so I didn't really feel that way because I was with her all the time. We were sharing the room uh, during the tournaments. Uh, so I was lucky, but, uh, but right now, for example, when, uh, when she's uh, not playing any anymore, when she retired, uh, I can feel that uh, it's tough because um, you are away from your family uh, basically almost almost whole year because uh, we are playing uh, 10 months there are tournaments 
So 10, 10 months we are away from home. Uh, then there is uh, the off season, but um, but the, the pre season, most of the girls are doing also away from home. They are doing uh, in warm places, for example, in the States or or Dubai or Doha. So they are also away from home, away from parents. Uh, and it's also tough to to keep contact with friends because some of the friends, which uh, they are not from tennis, which are not athletes, they don't understand that um, sometimes you don't have time to to meet with them or to spend time with them because you are either away from home or you are very tired after practice. So sometimes. All you want to do is spend the evening on the couch and not to go out and, uh, and, and meet them. And it's sometimes, yeah, some of the people, they don't understand. And sometimes they just think you don't want to spend time with them, but it's not like this. We are not really friends on the tour. Uh, there are sometimes uh, players who have like better connections with each other. Um, for example, my best friend was still is Caroline Wozniacki and Angelika Kerber. Uh, so I have those two very good friends uh, friends on tour. But I know that some of the players they don't have any friends uh, because we are talking with each other in the locker room and in the restaurant or on site. But then. For example, in the afternoon, uh, we are going on the same court and we are competing against each other. So sometimes it's tough, you know, because then we are, you know, spending time together, like in the rocky room, having fun. And for example, next day we have to play against each other. And some of the girls, um, some of the girls, they don't know how to lose, you know, and they think that if I beat them on the court, we cannot be friends anymore. So that's why friends uh, on the tour, it's not, it's not really um, often. Now I'm going to show you exercise for surf. Uh, this is the only shot that we have the full control on because the opponent has nothing to do with it. So uh, yeah, this is actually uh, the most important shot during the game because it, uh, it is opening uh, the point uh, and also uh, very important if the surface is fast. The first exercise uh, is going to be for the rotation. Uh, the rotation before the contact point with the ball and after. So um, the rotation is helping us uh, with the power in the surf, so it's, uh, it's very important and uh, it's worth to practice it. Rotation of your body has crucial impact on the speed of the surf. The best players in the world generate high speed by coiling and uncoiling different segments of own body.
this exercise, uh, very important is that in the beginning, uh, you are trying to show the back, your back to the, to the opponent. And then in the end, also the, the left hand needs to go behind you. So you're also showing the back, but from the, from the other side. Uh, I think the best player who is doing it during the surf is uh, Andy Murray. <coughs> if you are working on technical aspects of your surf, focus just on one segment. Trying to improve many areas at the same time won't help you build effective surf. Next surf exercise is also combined with the mental game. So I have here the zone. I have 10 surfs. Uh, and for example, if I put five surfs here in the zone, in the next 10 surfs, I have to, I have to put more because if I put less, then I'm losing a coffee because I always bet with my coach. So, um, so yeah, the, the second uh, part, the second 10 serves needs to be better than the first one. One. Two. Three. Four. It's important to feel comfortable while serving in different directions. Set up the zone and train to be able to put the ball into the weaker side of the opponent. Six. <laughs> Now the mental game begin because I have to put seven serves in the zone if I want to win the coffee. So it's going to be really tough and I have to be really focused.
One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Okay, this one is really important. Always focus on your performance. If you will start thinking about the score, you will feel more pressure. Now we're gonna work on my overhead shot. This is a little bit similar to surf. Uh, so by improving your overhead, you're gonna also improve your surf. So the first exercise, uh, I'm gonna be standing close to the net. Uh, my coach uh, will uh, feed me a high ball. So I need to go backward and I have to play the overhead shot. Always start the movement back with crossover step. This specific footwork pattern allows to cover bigger distance and set up good position for overhead. <laughs> Pay attention to my legs. Uh, because uh, I'm moving uh, backwards very fast, so, uh, so the re reaction is very important here. And then I jump from the right leg, so the jump is helping me uh, a lot. Uh, and also, uh, if uh, the ball is very deep, so uh, I catch the ball a little bit behind me, then I put more slice, because this is very tough ball, and the, the placement is uh, more important than the power. Remember to come to the net as quickly as possible after hitting overhead. Many times your opponent will hit defensive ball that you can easily finish with volley.